afternoon. So for those one or two friends in the audience, no heckling please. <coughs> um, and uh, I'm going to go at a rate of knots. So uh, uh, thank you for the segue. There's a number of things that you've raised there in here, including what happens if you own buildings in Tawasson. So uh, we'll go at a pace of knots and then uh, see where we get to from there. Uh, firstly, a plug for my profession, which nobody's ever heard of. It's the, la the largest, uh, worst kept secret in the world. It's the world's largest real estate profession in 132 countries. And so I thought I'd just say that we, uh, yeah. we do kind of a variety of things that you've probably never heard of. But our professionals are all over the place. 500 in Canada, I think there's about 200 in British Columbia. So it's, a, it's an interesting profession. It includes the environmental sections and value sections as well as development finance and so on, 147 specialisms or so. Let's start with the bad news <clears throat> and then go downhill from there. Uh, we the undersigned senior members of the world scientific community hereby warn all of humanity of what lies ahead. A great change in our stewardship of the earth and the life on it is required. If vast human misery is to be avoided and our global home on this planet is not to be irretrievably mutilated. Signed by 1,600 people from 17 countries, including 103 laureates. If you didn't read it, go read it. It's serious and it's deeply bad. These are bright people. These are not idiots. When they signed something like that a long time ago and we don't pay attention, it's dangerous. This is dangerous. It's quite serious. So I'll prove some of it. So here's the first one. Um, Norfolk Broads could be lost to sea in a year. This is a statement by the equivalent of the Minister of the Environment. It was made last year. Uh, the SOS sign there is one of the communities. 16 villages have been stated that they will be lost. They're not going to be protected by the government. They're not going to put up dikes or walls or anything else. Be prepared to lose your village. So they put an SOS on the website. You can go and search them there. I'll, by the way, I'll give this uh, presentation to to you so that uh, it includes clickable links so you can follow up on all of the research pieces that are in here. I've taken it to the original research. Um, mangrove loss put Burma at risk. That one I worked with the Chief Ecologist of the United Nations Environmental Program on an evaluation of why that, why that happens and why our commercial systems don't necessarily work properly in evaluating that kind of thing. Now, here we are. Anybody recognize that waterfront? Right now it's above it. That's roughly what it might look like. This is an analysis by a University of British Columbia. It was provided to the International Panel on Climate Change. I'd like to thank Dr. Stephen Shepherd for providing me with a copy of it. Watch. That's what happens if we do nothing. Anybody want a mortgage? This is, this is starting to get serious. How do you value this? How do you get a loan on it? If you're in New Orleans, how do you get your, your house uh, repaired, replaced? It's damaged. What happens? How do you get a loan in today's market anyway is a very good question, but in tomorrow's market where we try and rebuild damaged, to pro damaged properties, what goes on? I, I had a conversation with uh, a valuer who was telling me he was looking at a portfolio of a major bank in, in Britain, and I said, well, I remember the computer department for the, uh, for the whole of Barclays Bank was in the, uh, in the basement below the Thames level. Where is it now? And he said, well, it's not there anymore. What a shock. But that's the kind of adaptation which is going to start to be needed. In Britain, they've taken a different approach to it that they've said is, is move upstairs, keep doing what you're doing, move upstairs. The, the US approach is slightly different. It's take the building, jack it up several feet in the air. So we're, look, we're going to adapt slightly differently. <clears throat> this is all about climate change, isn't it? Anybody paid a different gas price lately? Because these two things are starting to intersect. We've got an energy problem and we've got a climate change problem. And the two things are happening around the same time. They affect real estate, they affect business. So this is the interesting one. A roughly 89% uh, of uh, energy consumption um, for oil is on, uh, energy consumption is on non-renewables. The problem is it's that the availability of oil is, is declining rapidly. And, and the problem is displacement. So if you can't fuel up your, your car with the oil anymore, then what you move to is another fuel, such as gas. 240 plus years, I believe, uh, natural gas supply globally, but if we substitute with oil, then it's 40 years. 
I can't afford to carry on like this. The only fuel which is going to outlast these two appears to be coal at the moment. Uh, there are 1,100 years worth of supply of coal in Australia, but it turns out to be about 30 years if China carries on the way it's going on. However, good news, they're not going to because they have 3,000 factories that are now closed. That was the BBC of the weekend. So I'm going at a pace here, but we need to understand what the implications are. So your choice is, would you like a Hummer or a smart car? And which of these is likely to, to withstand? And the conversation I've had with Mercedes is, send over the smart car, no engine, or put some electrics in here, and it'll turn into a battery pack, because it's light enough to do that. We have hydro here, so it's not adding a carbon. So, is this real? How real is it to you? How real is it, and how do you adapt to it? Well, if you're in New Orleans, you probably don't float your cars anymore. You move your, uh, you move your business somewhere else and you don't go back. So the implications from a value perspective are, are potentially <coughs> damaging. Um, we all know what happened with the fluctuation in oil prices, which is essentially a scarce resource, fossil fuels, which not only create the climate change, but they power our air conditioning systems in different parts of the country. They or do all kinds of things. So you're powering your car right away on through. But here's the stats on the right. They're, they're really dramatic. And these, these are from federal government, uh, US government reports. So Hurricane Katrina in 2005, which wasn't the largest storm. The largest storm in 2005 was in Asia. Um, 1,100 dead, slight problem. 80% flooded, another slight problem. Total losses, $300 billion and only 11% insured. Real problem. By the way, that's the good news. With the big storm that hit China, it was around 1% in truth. So now what does that do? Let me place you in the position as a, as a businessman here. As your supply pipeline for the goods that you manufacture or process or purchase or survive on, is that dependent on China or any area where there is a supply pipeline through to you? Because if so, your business is at risk. Your real estate is at risk. Your business is at risk. So. Um, the Stern Review, is a, it's not in the main report, you have to look at the appendices, and the Stern Review, which, uh, by the way, he got promotion, he's now Lord Stern, um, obviously writing good program, good books, does well. Um, China, 3% of the year uh, lost to disasters, Stern said. Um, the, if you calculate the appendix carefully, what you realize is 546 million people, or 42% of, of China's population, live below the five meter datum, which a lot of people say is about the level which happens if Greenland goes, the ice on Greenland goes. 72.5% of the national GDP. Now, if you're running GM, do you rely on Chinese <coughs> parts? What's, what's your just-in-time strategy for a building that's underwater? Oh, and by the way, the cost of oil's gone up, so that ship that was going to sail here probably has to have sails as opposed to an engine, if it's running on oil. So forget bunker fuel, oh, we're onto the gas thing, remember the substitutionary effect. So we have an energy problem, and by the way, that ship is going to get blown off course by storms, and so probably what's going to happen is exactly what has happened recently. 3,000 factories closed because of repatriation, really, of business. If I contract out somebody and I don't have the business anymore, I stop the contract. China is at risk because it's an economic concentrator. So probably what's going to happen is that business is going to move back here. So in terms of adapting to climate change, your supply pipeline probably wants to move closer to home. Good news is, if it's in BC, there's a respending effect. If you, if you place that business in tariffs, it has a respending effect of something like seven times. So that one dollar goes through the economy seven times. If it goes offshore, so if you buy your BC ferries and you pay Germany for it, the money's gone, it's not coming back. But if you build it somewhere here, it has between 1.7 and 7 times respending effect. Your taxes go down because there's more economy in British Columbia. I don't think the premium will sign that. The last grant will force them to do it, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Um, road through Stanley Park. Everybody remembers that. Don't think it doesn't happen. 